If you have a unit like this or anything else that you know you're going to not use that often, six months or longer, it's gonna be sitting in your garage, I promise you, if you do this trick, it will definitely start the next time you go to use it. y'all thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Y'all asked so I'm gonna do it. I'm making another trash to treasure video so let's go dig something out of the back of the shop and make it run. But before we jump into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I'll reply to all the early commenters. Alright, let's see, what do I want to mess with? I think I found it. Oh yeah. We can totally get these running. So I know I've been holding on to this piece of equipment for at least five years, so let's check compression just to make sure it's still good. Wow, this thing still has 130 pounds of compression. Awesome. And just to be sure, I'm pretty confident it probably has fire, but we're gonna go ahead and check anyway, since we are working on a 20 year old machine. Plenty of fire. And if you wanna find a spark tester just like mine, I do leave a link in the description box below to all the tools that I use. So why did I pick a weed eater brand head trimmer to fix? That's because I know there are tons of you out there that have had one sitting in your garage for the last 20 years and all it takes is $10 in parts and about 20 to 30 minutes of your time and you can get these bad boys running again. And the truth is, most people don't need to spend a ton of money on a really expensive hedge trimmer. There's two types of people. There's people that have a ton of hedges and they have to have something commercial that's three to $400 or there's the people that have four bushes that use it twice a year for 10 minutes. They can't get to it with a corded one. A battery operated one is just as you know useless if you're going to have to buy a battery because who remembers to keep their battery charged that you're only going to use for 10 minutes twice a year. It's the same thing. So these gas powered ones, they will last forever. And yeah, if they sat for a period of time, they do need a little bit of work, but it's really simple. So I'm gonna show you how to fix it all by yourself to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. So we know that the fuel lines are hard as a rock. The air filter is probably turned into dust. We're gonna take that off, get the carburetor off. We're going to open the gas cap. Get, I don't think there's anything in there, thank goodness. And we're going to remove the fuel filter. We have to take this side cover off of the throttle handle to get to the fuel lines to where they go into the tank. Other than that, Everything's over here. It's real simple. Let's start tearing it apart. All right, let's take this air filter cover off. Well, it's not dust yet. It's sort of hard, but it's actually, could probably be oiled and reused. Sweet. Then we're gonna use the four to take out the two screws holding the air filter base and the carburetor on. Primer bulbs hard and broke. Next, we're going to remove this side cover here. I don't know if I've got to remove, I think I only have to remove one more of these, but I'm not sure which one it is. It might not be this one. Yeah, it's that one, okay. 
Everything's staying in your spot. No, we don't really want to let this fall apart if we don't have to, because we can just set this to the side and put it all back on really easily. If it does, I'll make sure to let you know how it all goes back together. So you can see the fuel lines, they come through here and directly into the fuel tank. So we're just gonna get them out of there. Okay, so I've got me some Tigon line to put back in it. It is inside diameter 332nds and outside diameter 316ths. So I'm just going to measure my old lines. Now this was the return line. I know this because it's cut sideways here and that's exactly how we're gonna put it back in. I'm gonna cut a little bit of it sideways just to snub in there, grab it with my noodle nose pliers on the inside and tug it through and just let it hang there because that's just the return to the tank. So we are going to measure how long it was here just give it a little cut you know that's our return line our other line that went to our filter we know we did cut off just a smidge of it so we're going to make sure that we make it as long as we've got here plus the little bit that we cut off and then also we're going to cut it sideways a little bit so we can get it through the hole and then grab it with our needle nose pliers. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more. Then I'm just gonna cut right down the center. Just like that. I'm gonna make it into sort of a point. That way it'll go through that hole really easily. I'm gonna do the same thing with my return line. Just cut right down the center, come off the side there, make it into a point. That way it's really easy to get into those holes. So we're going to put our return line in first. I've got it in there and I just Little slight pull just to tug it in because that's all it needs. You want to get past that part where you cut it sideways and then the rest will be hanging out here up to your carburetor. Then we're going to put in our line for our fuel filter. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go in here, grab that one. And with that one, I'm going to twist my needle nose here and I'm going to pull it on out because I got to get the fuel filter on it. Oh, I got a hold of both of them. There we go. Now I just got the fuel filter on. So I'm going to pull it on through. tough. We're going to cut off that little excess that we had cut sideways. Then we're going to stretch the end of our line out with our needle nose. That way it's much easier to get our fuel filter on there. I just stick my needle nose in and then I pull it apart, twist it a little bit pull it apart and then it slips right in. Lay that back down in there. That's plenty of line for it to lay well in the bottom of the tank. Now we see whenever we took it apart, it went in this little groove right here in the handle. So we're going to put them back in there. Just like that. And we want to make sure not to pinch it with this screw that goes through right here. So 
and this one's gonna go right in there too. We're gonna know that the one farthest away is the one that goes to the fuel filter. The one closest to us is our return line. And then we can put our handle back. We lost our, lost our trigger, throttle lock there. All this goes in real easy. Get you a picture of it right here so you can see it. If yours did fall apart, just make sure that this sticks up inside here because it sort of bounces off that whenever you put it back together. You can see the spring for the throttle sticks right here, goes around the back right there. Everything, it's a super simple design, so. I do think I want to put my lines through here though before I tighten it all down. Okay, now put them back in there. And put our handle back together. Put our screws back in. Now to the carburetor. Now the only thing that scares me about this is that a lot of times when your primer bulb breaks and it sits for a long period of time without being having any kind of lubrication inside here, deep inside this little area right here is it the a little diaphragm inside of there and if it gets hard and stuck the primer won't work so a lot of times people think oh it's okay I don't need you know my primer bulb it's still starting with the choke or whatever you still want to go ahead and always change your primer bulb out if it's cracked because you don't want this little part getting dried out because then you have to either find one of these bases right here which a lot of times are the price of half the carburetor or get a new carburetor so always change your primer bulb out if it's cracked but I can tell you how to completely avoid it for long-term storage. If you have a unit like this or anything else that you know you're going to not use that often, six months or longer, it's gonna be sitting in your garage. I promise you, if you do this trick, it will definitely start the next time you go to use it. When you're done using your machine for storage, you're going to run it until it runs out of gas. Pour out whatever you want to, start it back up and let it run until it dies. You're gonna put a uh, two cycle oil into your gas tank prime it into your carburetor to where you see it in your primer bulb, you know it's in your carburetor, it's in your fuel lines, it's in your tank covering your fuel filter and your fuel line in your tank, and it'll sit for years that way. And all you have to do whenever you wanna go run it again, pour that oil out of your gas tank, put some fresh fuel in there, prime it through, it'll flush through your carburetor, through your primer bulb, through your fuel lines. It might smoke just a little bit when you first start it up, but that doesn't matter. It's gonna save you time, money, and frustration, and keep you out of the repair shop. All right, let's get back to this carburetor here. We're gonna start taking it apart. And actually, the carburetor looks like in really good condition. There was nothing left in it. Look at how clean that looks. Wow, let's see what the other side looks like. I wonder if this was barely ran after it was kitted years ago. I don't know. That's stuck. Oh. That one's hard as a rock. Now, I'm telling you, if we would have had oil filled in this, this thing, we could have primed through and it would have ran. Just a new primer bulb, that's all it would have needed. But that is hot. So, we're gonna take this needle out, give it a good spray, even though I really don't even think it, it needs a spray. It's pretty clean. I bet I could just throw a primer bulb and a metering diaphragm in it and this thing would run.
Yeah, I can still see through the screen. It still is clear. Hmm. Yeah, it just sat so long it hardened up. So I think I'm even going to go with the same needle that was in it. It really looks fine. This thing might have had a kit put in it and was barely used or something. I don't know. So when I put it back in, I'm putting the needle first, putting my spring right there. I got my little needle lever. And set it just like that so I can come down on top of the spring, swoop underneath the needle, hold it all down into place as I put my screw back in. good. Now I'm just going with this old gasket and diaphragm because it has no indention to it, barely whatsoever. I think it's still pretty much in good shape. So I can go ahead and put this side back on. Now I just had a uh, Zama metering diaphragm laying around. You'll probably want to get a kit if you're, you know, if you're doing this. I think it's an RB129 Zama kit. Um, but I luckily just had a metering diaphragm and that's pretty much all I need now. Um, if you did have one, you just want to make sure that the hole, see this one just has one special hole here on the top that we have to have. The old one, it didn't have one on the right. It just had it on the left. If it has two, it doesn't matter. It's still, you know, fine. So, so I'm going to put a gasket on here. And then the gasket always goes first. Then the metering diaphragm. Line all my holes up there. Now, both of the fuel lines were on the same side. So I know that it sits this way because you can put it on backwards. Next, and we've got our new primer purge bulb. We've got two short screws and two long screws. The two short screws are gonna go first and then the longer screws, once we put this bracket on, are gonna go outside right here. So, put the short ones in first. And we can put our bracket on. With our long screws. Next, we can go ahead and put our fuel lines back onto our carburetor. Now we remember the one that was farthest away was going to the fuel filter. So the fuel filter line always goes farthest away to the, from the purge bulb because it sucks the gas up through the fuel filter, in the fuel line, in through the carburetor, into the primer bulb, and then back into the tank. So I don't think I need to stretch it out because these are pretty skinny nipples on here. So that's good. And we'll put our return line back on. And then we're going to reattach our throttle cable here, but it's going to sit like this. So we're going to, because the choke lever goes towards the front here. And then we're going to put our air filter base back on. You're going to want to make sure to line this up really good with its holes because it's a plastic carburetor mounting block and you really don't want to strip that out. Okay, so we got some gas in her. Let's see if she's going to prime. Oh, I feel something coming. Oh, it's filling up. It still works. Sweet. Okay, we're going to put it on full choke. She's turned on. Let's see if she runs. Full choke. Hang no 
those blades off the end of the table. Is that a pop off? I don't know. I'm putting it on a half choke just to make sure. It's almost there. Give it some throttle. It's so hard to get back up. Okay, it did not idle, but I can fix that. Might be able to get away with just a small adjustment here. I'm going to come out on the low just a little bit. And it's got a limiter cap. That's going to have to come off. Let's go in on the idle. Some. Try it again. Goodness gracious, I had made this. The tank vent, the little hole in the center of the cap is leaking a little bit. I did have the cap loose though, so it made a huge mess, but I am gonna have to change the cap out, so unless there's a duck bill in there that I can replace. So, I'm gonna just leave something underneath it. Get this on the end, let's see what she does. probably get 60 70 bucks out of her I mean heck totally worth it these things sold for about 130 bucks new and uh, to tell you the truth it's still got a beautiful piston and cylinder perfect compression carburetor's been gone through fuel lines fuel filter uh, this thing's gonna last a heck of a long time so thanks again for tuning back into Chicanic hopefully this video saved you time money and frustration in the future if you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find us at Instagram at the real chicanic or find us at chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks and have a great day.